Galnet News Digest, 18th of May, 3307. We read the news so you don't have to. In this week's news, Tharg gets a kick in the call sack. Data mind snake conceptions. Bio waste bonanza. Total ship recall. Despite commanders rushing off to the Crystal Shard forests to gather materials amid concerns that the forests may suddenly and inexplicably vanish, progress in repelling the latest Thargoid invasion has been more than encouraging. Anti-Xeno combat pilots have been out in force in the Corsac and California Nebulae and in the Pleiades region, fighting off the invading Thargoid hordes. Tharg the Mighty's tentacles have already been eliminated from Muska Dark Region PJ-PB6-1, where can be found the Alliance Regional Headquarters Beatoncourt Base, and from Kilano, wherein lies Artemis Lodge. Two of the systems in the Colsac Nebula still have a massive Thargoid presence, but everywhere else deep inroads have been carved into the Thargoid battle fleet with an expectation that at least two starports will be under repair late this week. Meanwhile, huge numbers of starport workers from the ten damaged stations have been evacuated to a nearby rescue ship by commanders with passenger cabins and heat sinks. There's some concern that changes being made to the galaxy later in the week may have an impact on future progress towards driving the Thargoids out of the remaining systems, but Aegis remains confident that commanders will complete the task that they've started and that the Thargoid presence will have been totally eliminated by the end of the month. Commanders with a good knowledge of information technology and a rather less thorough grasp of the Pilots' Federation Terms of Service have been finding out what wonderful new things may be coming to the galaxy. Galnet News Digest pays no attention to such nonsense, preferring instead to speculate wildly and without any basis in fact. So, on the basis of uninformed speculation, what might be coming to the galaxy? Spaceships! That's what! There are plenty of old designs just waiting to be brought up to date and released into the showrooms. Many of them are named after snakes. Who doesn't long to see the boa wriggling around the galaxy, or the entirely different ship called the Constrictor? The Gecko has fans, as does the submersible Moray Starboat. And what commander hasn't wanted to own a worm-class landing ship? Add to that all the other classic ships, the Bushmaster, Cayman, Cougar, Chameleon, Copperhead, Delta, Drake, Garviel, Griffin Gnat... <laughs> Hawk, Hognose, Iguana, Moccasin, Monitor, Ophidian, Eraser, Urutu and Wolf. And of course the Panther Clipper, which everyone was expecting to be re-released back in 3300 and every year since. And the potential for new ships for sale in galactic shipyards seems almost unlimited. But there's more. Speculation is rife that there may be strange sorts of space vegetables on the new planets that may be scannable using a special new form of scanning device. There are rumours of space taxis run by a company called Apex Interstellar and of strange settlements that can be raided on foot. There are tales of a mercenary facilitation organisation that will set you up fighting on either side in a conflict zone. They're not fussy. There are fables of a starport bar where the bartender will trade strange new materials and buy stolen goods and have a strange white-headed gentleman sleeping on a bench. What else might there be? Could there be new surface vehicles to buy? Could there be new encounters with Thargoids? With the Guardians? Will there be a new David Breben bubblehead who can say whether any of this speculation is true? The sensible thing to do is wait and see. The Alliance's decision to hold the Prime Ministerial election on a Thursday can only mean one thing. Pilots' Federation members will be asked to help out in some way. But how? Bringing in the ballot boxes, perhaps? Ferrying foodstuffs and beer to the ballot counters? 
taking sides in a civil war that breaks out when Mann is inexplicably re-elected despite his distinctly beige credentials. Or will it be something more exciting? If Mann gets the shove, will Nakato Kane take over not only the post of Prime Minister, but also Mann's power play responsibilities? Will the utterly useless mining lance be replaced by a new weapon, sponsored by power play leader Prime Minister Nakato Kane? And if so, what form will it take? What sort of weapon would fit the current alliance zeitgeist? Galnet News Digest believes it may have stumbled upon the answer earlier in the week. Nakato King's special power play weapon will be a giant trebuchet that can be fitted atop any Lake on Spaceways ship. The Alliance Shitslinger launches a huge gobbit of ordure towards enemy ships, covering the cockpit viewing screen, fouling the thermal radiators, and clogging up the hard points. A fully functioning enemy ship can be turned into an entirely non-functional brick with one well-aimed shot. The community goal will be to source and supply as much bio-waste as possible to fuel this new miracle weapon. And when the goal is reached, enemy pilots had better watch out. Commanders pledged to Nakato Kane, who earn this new weapon, will soon have them shitting bricks. Every ship in the galaxy is being recalled for urgent work by the Pilots' Federation on Wednesday the 19th of May, the day on which Odyssey permits will, for the first time, be issued. These are real permits this time, not the pretend alpha permits, and they will allow commanders who have paid the appropriate fee not only to land on a significant number of new planets, but also get out of their spaceships and walk on the planetary surfaces. Commanders will be able to form teams with other Odyssey pilots, which allows them to take rides in each other's spaceships and to drive each other's surface vehicles. However, commanders who have not paid for the Odyssey permit, including users of the PS and Xbox flight control systems, will see absolutely no change whatsoever in the galaxy after the emergency maintenance completes. Everything will be spookily the same. So, why the need for the universal ship recall? It's all down to the equipment that segregates Odyssey commanders from the rest. While commanders with the Odyssey permit will be granted access to the new environments and capabilities, all other commanders' ships will be fitted with the Trojan device, a mechanism that prevents their view screens from displaying the galaxy in all its newfound visual splendour. Instead, these unfortunate commanders will see a real-time recreation of the galaxy as it used to be, the old Horizons way. Opinion is divided about whether non-Odyssey commanders will actually be in a different, parallel galaxy that looks and behaves like the old one, but they certainly won't be able to see Odyssey commanders unless the latter choose to cast off their godlike status and manifest themselves to less privileged commanders using the Horizons portal. In around six months, on a date yet to be confirmed known as Soon TM Day, <laughs> the Trojan devices will be removed, allowing all commanders finally to see the galaxy as it truly is. The Odyssey ship upgrades and the Trojan ship modifications will start at 0700, with no flying permitted, and should be completed 11 hours later at 1800, at which point a combination of downloading the ship software updates and a mad rush to log in and claim first footfall on a favourite planet will cause orbital traffic control chaos, with a selection of orange sidewinders, mauve, black and yellow adders, scarlet and magenta crates, purple pythons, blue, gold, teal and taupe cobras, and not to forget a spate of the much-loved silver ferdelands. And if you complain that you can't fly your ship, older and wiser heads belonging to older and wiser smart arses will shake, and the ancient adage of never play on patch day will be muttered, along with the equally venerable and pointless question. You did remember to back up your bindings didn't you? 
And that's the last Galnet news from the Horizons Galaxy. Galnet news. We bring atmosphere to the news so the Pilots Federation don't have to. Never listen to a smart ass. <laughs>